After more than 35 cruises, I recently went on my very first MSC cruise. This being a European cruise line, we knew that there would be some differences from what we were used to. Truthfully, I wasn't sure if we would like the food and dining, the entertainment, and the overall cruise experience. That said, our first MSC cruise was not what we expected. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, we recently came back from our first MSC cruise on one of MSC's newest cruise ships, MSC Seascape. Now, MSC Seascape and MSC Cruises in general does get some mixed reviews. So I went in with a little bit of trepidation, but also an open mind because I did want to find out would we like this cruise? And what would we think of all aspects of this cruise? Now, something that you should know is that MSC right now has five cruise ships that are leaving out of Florida. And for next year, the plan is to have six leaving out of Florida. And MSC is definitely gaining ground in the North American market. So I was really curious to see if we would like it and if we would consider sailing with MSC again. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you what we thought about the food and the dining, the ship and the cabins, the crew and the service, of course, the passengers and the demographic, as well as who I think this cruise is for. Now, we also have to talk about the value and the price and some of the things that I loved and some of the things that I didn't like as much. Now, don't worry, along the way, I'll also share with you some tips and tricks that you can use if you are going to be sailing on this cruise ship or even perhaps another MSC cruise in the future. Now, before I get started, I did want to mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Now, we were sailing on MSC Seascape, which made its debut in November 2022. Now, the Seascape is part of the Seaside class of cruise ships. However, it is a little bit bigger at 170,000 tons than its predecessor. At double occupancy, it can hold 4,600 passengers. However, it can go all the way up to about 5,600 passengers if you have third and fourth passengers. So in other words, a lot of families on board and you have approximately 1,600 crew. Now, as we boarded MSC Seascape on embarkation day, we were struck by how beautiful this cruise ship is. We entered through the atrium, which is four decks high. And we came to find out during the cruise that a lot of activities and evening entertainment happen here. And it really does feel like the heart of the vessel where there's a lot of music that is played. It really became a hub where we tended to gather every day. Now, as we walked around the ship, we realized that the glamour and the elegance did not stop at the atrium. The entirety of the interior of the cruise ship is absolutely beautiful and elegant. There's a lot of attention to detail from the shops to the cafes, to the lounges, to the public areas in general. Now, this is a very glitzy ship with a lot of places that make good photo opportunities including, of course, the absolutely gorgeous crystal staircases. Now, before we went to lunch, we went to check out our cabin and to drop off our carry-on bags. We had a balcony cabin on deck 13. It was a very nice cabin and we were actually pretty happy with the amount of storage we had with the full-sized couch, which did turn into a bed for a third passenger in the evening and the spacious balcony. Now I'm gonna share a hint with you, which is very important for embarkation day. When you go into your cabin, you're gonna to have to watch your safety video before you check in to your muster station. But something that we weren't aware of, and I want you to be aware of, is what you'll need to do is there's actually a phone number that you're going to need to call from your cabin. Now they are gonna announce that number on our cruise. It was 811. It may be different for your cruise. So make sure that you do keep out an ear for it. Now, if you would like more embarkation day tips and tricks for MSE, please do let me know down in the comments below. Now, before we explore the rest of the ship, we did stop for a quick lunch in the very large buffet. And I was very pleasantly surprised. The lunch was fantastic. There were a lot of different choices. I did have the burrata and the tomatoes absolutely loved it with some nice fresh fruit, but more on the buffet 
and the rest of the dining a little bit later in this video. Now, even though we explored the cruise ship on the very first day, throughout our cruise, we were continuously making new discoveries, new lounges, new restaurants, new bars, including a cafe, and a sports bar, this ship never really ceased to surprise us. The pool decks. Now there are several pools and hot tubs on MSC Seascape, so it really is worth walking around the decks to find all of the different areas. Some were definitely more crowded than others. The main pool is the marina pool. That's where you're going to find the Robotron that is there. That's going to be the area where there's a little bit more entertainment during the day and during the evening. That definitely was the busiest pool. So if you don't like crowds, I would definitely go along the side of the cruise ship where there are a lot of chairs and it's going to be much quieter. And there are some jacuzzis or hot tubs, which we came to find out are not kept very hot on MSC. Now, I personally like a very hot hot tub. Other people like it lukewarm. Please let me know your own thoughts in the comments below. What is the ideal temperature for a cruise ship hot tub? Now, as you continue walking past the marina pool, you're going to find the Pirate's Cove Aqua Park. This was definitely a very busy area for kids and for families. There are four water slides. There's an entire play water park. It looked like a lot of fun and I could definitely see why so many families are drawn to this cruise ship. Now another pool that definitely looked themed for children but definitely didn't need to be for children at all is the jungle pool. Now this pool in contrast to the marina pool did have more shaded areas, actually more plush chairs. It was really a very beautiful pool and area where they even had some tables that you could sit and relax, it was just outside of the buffet. By the way, you also do have a kids club that you can access through this area, and you'll find some fun activities for all, including an arcade that I believe is called Hall of Games. Now I will share with you my personal favorite pool, but first, going forward, we have top 19 exclusive solarium area. Now this is exclusive to either the yacht club or to those that are booked in the Aurea package. In another video, I will discuss the different packages that are available with MSC, but this is a very nice exclusive area that does have a couple of jacuzzis. Oh, and I should mention that we were on a seven day Caribbean cruise where our ports were Nassau, Bahamas, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Port Taino, please let me know if I'm mispronouncing that, Dominican Republic, and MSC's own private island, Ocean K Marine Reserve. Now, towards the end of the video, I will share with you what we did in each of those cruise ports of call. The Wake Infinity Pool. Now, this is a pool that might be hard to find. It is on deck eight at the aft of the cruise ship. Now, this is the part that I loved where our cabin was situated because we were 13254 which meant that we were towards the aft of the cruise ship. Now we were able to take those aft elevators and we could go straight up to the buffet, which oftentimes we did like to go to, and we could go straight down to the wake pool. And truthfully, those elevators, this is a little hint for you, were almost always very quiet and fast. Now the wake infinity pool was really lovely, a quiet pool. And at the same time, you had a lot of table seating there was a good bar that was there and it became a nice place to hang out and even get some gelato. I have to say, I think Frank was in heaven because he had gelato just about every day. Now, similar to the upper decks, if you like an area that's a little bit more quiet on the sides of deck eight, you are going to find large hot tub style jacuzzis. I think they were also kind of lukewarm, so they really could double as a pool. Now, if you like to keep active, there is a sports court located at the top of the cruise ship. You'll also find a gym and a spa. By the way, look out for spa specials in your daily planner. There are definitely some good ones. The food and dining. Now we have to talk about the food and dining because I think that this is what I heard the most about before my cruise. So I really wanted to share my thoughts as well as some tips for you. So in terms of the food on MSC Seascape, you have a very large sprawling buffet. Make sure that you walk all the way to the back. That is where it's going to be the least crowded. And honestly, there were some very, very good choices. You also have several included main dining rooms. Now they all serve the same food and you are going to be assigned to one. You also have several specialty restaurants and you can purchase some packages if this is something that you like. Now we ate most of our breakfast and lunch 
in the buffet, which by the way, I found quite good. I will share a few examples, but we did order room service a couple of times. It was a continental room service breakfast that was included in our Fantastica experience. And it was really a very good way to start the day. Now, when it came to the breakfast, we found there was quite a lot of choice. Now I had omelets some days, there were bagels and smoked salmon. There were all of the standard fare like carved ham and pancakes and waffles, but as well, there were also special dishes that were prepared, including one day when we did get this egg sort of little casserole in the morning. It was absolutely delicious. And one of the things that I really did like best sailing on MSC is the variety of fresh fruits that were available, not only breakfast, but during lunch for snacks during the day. So not only was there melon, but oftentimes we would find berries, we would find mango. I think one day we saw papaya. So really quite a nice variety, including some whole fresh fruits as well. Now for lunch, of course, we did have some pizza and yes, the pizza on MSC is very good. Now, Ethan did try it and Ethan rated it an 8.2. Now he never gives any tens and he says for Krusha pizza that it is among the best. Now the lunch buffet was quite large and there was quite a lot of variety, but something that is a little bit different on MSC versus some of the American cruise lines is that some of the food really does have more of a European feeling a lot of sandwich meats, so different kinds of salamis, a lot of really nice cheeses. Like I mentioned on embarkation day, there was burrata, but we also saw some brie. Now, personally, I really like that. I'm in heaven with a glass of wine or an Aperol spritz and some cheese and focaccia. So that is really my kind of lunch, but there were other things as well. So of course you did have burgers. I have to say Frank and Ethan did say that they really liked the burgers, but it did taste a little bit like a Big Mac in terms of the sauce that was on it. There were also sausages, hot dogs, French fries. We saw some nachos. So definitely some, I guess, American style food was there as well, if you will. Now something super fun is they did have a kid's buffet. I love this. And if my children were young, I know that they would really appreciate this. Kids could go in their very own line, pick up the little items that they want. And also I think for us adults, it also keeps the kids out of the sort of regular buffet, which I do think makes everything a little bit more sanitary. Now I am gonna talk about the main dining room next, but something that I did want to mention that was particularly nice on this cruise ship, and I've never seen people talk about this on MSC is that when you are sitting at the table in the buffet is that you do have a little button where you can call a server over and they will take your drink order. So whether it's a soft drink, a bottle of water, a glass of wine, they will bring that right to you. And this was something I really appreciated on MSC. Now, speaking of drinks, one of my favorite things as well was at the very back of the buffet, there was a little bar, a lot of different chairs. Now this was a little bit of a hidden area that I don't think people realized that towards the left, you can actually sit outside and you can have your breakfast or your lunch. But as well there, when it comes to the bar, they will serve wine and really delicious specialty coffee right from the bar. So there you can't get any other kind of mixed drinks, but you can get wine, beer, and coffee. Now, when it comes to the main dining room, we were sitting in the Green Wave restaurant. We ate there four nights during our cruise. Now, what did we think of the Green Wave restaurant? Honestly, our service was really very good. The servers worked very hard. We had a main waiter and an assistant. And overall, the food was very good. There was one evening where the food came out, I would say a little bit warm and not hot. However, I did mention it to the waiter. And the next time we were in the main dining room, all of the food came out hot. So I do think that that is something important to remember. If there's something that isn't 100% to your liking, if you don't speak up, nobody knows, and they really can then make the change if that is something that is important to you. Now, we really liked many of the appetizers, including the shrimp cocktail, which I think was available every evening. I particularly liked this dish that was an eggplant parmesan. It was pretty small, but it was made to taste so good with some nice fresh basil. I really liked the lamb shank as well. Frank and Ethan absolutely loved the steak and the prime rib. The only thing that was maybe a little bit surprising is we didn't absolutely love the pasta dishes. Oh, and yes, 
the desserts from the creme brulee to grandma's chocolate cake to the cheesecake were delicious. Now, keeping in mind that they are serving about 5,000 people every evening on this cruise ship, the tables were a little bit close together, in particular, the rectangle or square type tables. You would have a little bit more room if you had a round table, but you were in and out our dinner started at 7.30 and we were out by nine o'clock, which gave us plenty of time for the entertainment in the evening. Now, in terms of the specialty restaurants, we did try three specialty restaurants that were part of one of these specialty restaurant packages. Now, our cruise was not sponsored, but full disclosure, MSC did provide us with the three restaurant package, which we did enjoy. Now, in particular, one of the restaurants that I probably would have never tried was Ola's Tacos and Cantina. Now, this ended up being one of my favorite restaurants. I would definitely go again. It was all casual, but really good tacos and Mexican food. And in particular, it was the atmosphere that was fun and casual. We absolutely loved it. Now we also went to Butcher's Cat, which is a steakhouse. I knew we couldn't go wrong with a steakhouse. We particularly do like that. The steak was amazing. All of the sides were phenomenal and the dessert was way too decadent. And by the way, the atmosphere was really nice at Butcher's Cat. Now another restaurant we tried was Ocean K. Now the presentation of all of the fish and the seafood was absolutely wonderful. The service was great. Now I admit we are not super adventurous eaters. And as a matter of fact, Frank doesn't really like fish that much. So this restaurant experience was a little bit different for us. Now, while we really did enjoy the food, one of the things that we found in terms of the menu was that there weren't really alternative meat options that were really of the same quality as the fish dishes to choose from. Now, in speaking with one of the restaurant managers during our cruise, we came to find out that there should be a change coming soon for that restaurant in terms of the menu, which is something that I hope that they do so that everybody in a family or friend group can enjoy that restaurant, whether they love fish or not. The drinks. Now on our cruise, we did have a drink package. I believe it was called Easy Plus. This was something that when I booked my cruise was part of the packages that were available. I did book this and I was very pleasantly surprised. When we got on board, we found out that this included drinks up to $10 per drink. Now I thought maybe I'm gonna have to upgrade that package, but I did not. I was able to have Aperol spritzes. My husband had his lemon drops or his lemon teenies. We had espresso martinis. We had pina coladas, really almost any type of drink that we could want we were able to order in that package. Now there definitely were some drinks that were over and above that, but I never felt the need to have to order them during my cruise. Now as well included in my package was specialty coffee. So I was able to have my Americano coffee. Frank and Ethan had their cappuccinos. And one of the things that I really loved on this cruise ship, and perhaps it is because it's a European line, is that at pretty much most of the bars that we went to, we were able to get these specialty coffees. So it wasn't only for a drink at the bar, but we could also get a nice hot or cold coffee. Now, by the way, a little tip, if you go to the atrium bar during the morning time and you wanna have a nice cappuccino there, they do have a few little pastries that are there. So even though this is not the buffet, you will find some nibbles there. The entertainment and activities. Now, during the day, there were different activities from trivia to a culinary demonstration. And during the evening, you also had a variety of entertainment. Now, a lot of the entertainment either happened in Cabaret Rouge, in one of the lounges, Uptown Lounge, and as well, you did have the main theater. Now, in the main theater, we saw a Broadway style show. There was one that was actually particularly fun, and I think really for the whole family, that was something that we noticed. There were a lot of kids, there were a lot of, um, let's just say, couples or adults that were in their 40s and maybe their 50s. There were some older adults as well. And we had noticed with one of the shows that there was a lot of music that seemed to be from different Hollywood movies and productions, a lot of songs from that. And that was something that a lot of people really did enjoy. Now we also saw a comedian. The comedian I'd say was pretty good, but it was probably just a little bit long of an act for that particular comedian. Now I would say in terms of the entertainment, if you were comparing it to some 
other cruise lines that at least in terms of the sets and the overall production value that I wouldn't say it's their strongest point. Now in Cabaret Rouge in sort of the early to mid evening you'll have different singing acts different things going on there and that definitely is a happening place in the later evening so sort of after 11 p.m. or so it does become a dance and a nightclub that is apparently very happening. Now while I was in bed around midnight Ethan was often out quite late, so I do think that this is a cruise that if you like a good nightlife, you are going to find it. Now, when it comes to evening entertainment, MSC has some great parties, including the MSC White Night Party. Now, the White Party was a lot of fun. This was on the pool deck, so make sure that you do bring your white outfit and be prepared to have a fun night. By the way, I have a little hidden gem for you that I want you to look out for. As you're heading towards Cabaret Rouge, you are going to find an air balloon that makes a really good photo op. Now, when you see it, you are going to know exactly what I mean, but there is sort of an LED screen right behind the air balloon where the scenery changes, and that is going to make an absolutely fabulous photo. Now, if you've ever been on this cruise ship, please let me know if you found this spot down in the comments below. The crew and the service. Now, the crew on MSC Seascape were absolutely fantastic. From the very hardworking, main dining room crew to the very helpful staff in the buffet to our cabin attendant who cleaned our room twice a day much appreciated when you are three people in the cabin to guest services and the photo staff who were very helpful when i did have an issue with my internet now sometimes we can think during a cruise is it just me am i just having a particularly good experience but something that i did during this cruise is i talked to a lot of passengers on board. And if you've ever been on a cruise with me before, you know that I definitely chat and I definitely ask other people, what are you thinking of the cruise? And I take that genuine feedback. And honestly, the majority of the people that I spoke with, like strong, strong majority, were having an absolutely wonderful cruise. They thought the food was really good. They thought the service was really good. And truthfully, a lot of people mentioned to me, they said, I don't know about the different reviews that we read and we watched because this is much better than we expected. Now that said, I still will share with you the value and the price that we actually paid for our cruise, the demographics of the passengers that were on board our cruise and who I think this cruise is for the things I really loved and the things I didn't like as much and if I will be booking another MSC cruise again. But first, let's talk about what we did in our four ports of call. The ports. Now, I love a good Caribbean itinerary and this was a pretty good one. We started off our cruise in Nassau, Bahamas. Now, I've actually been to Nassau, Bahamas three times this year, so we didn't get off the cruise ship for long, but we did walk around in the cruise port because Nassau has made some really good improvements. It really is very beautiful right outside the cruise port. You can definitely shop, you can pick up some nice drinks, you can pick up some local foods and you can walk along what really is a very nice boardwalk or of course you can pick up one of the many excursions. Now our next port of call was San Juan, Puerto Rico. Now I haven't been to San Juan in about a decade and I really like this cruise port of call. It is such a nice port to walk around. So that's what we did. We walked around, we walked up to one of the forts, we walked along to the other fort. It really is just such an incredibly beautiful view. We walked through the streets with the beautiful colorful buildings. We stopped in at a restaurant to eat a little bit of local food before we made our way back to the cruise ship. Now, every time I go to San Juan, I do walk around old San Juan because I enjoy it so much. But the next time we go, I definitely do plan to do an excursion. So please let me know any of the suggestions you have for this cruise port of call. Please leave it down in the comments below. Now, next up, we were in Port Taino in Dominican Republic. Now I know I'm probably mispronouncing that, so forgive me. This is, I think, one of the very best cruise ports of call. If you see this on your itinerary, definitely go. I maybe will make an entire video about it, so please let me know if you'd like to see that. But there is a resort style pool, there is a lazy river, there are places to eat when you're there. So there are a lot of things that you can do right at the cruise port without even booking an excursion. And our final stop, we were very lucky. We got to go to MSC's own private island, Ocean K Marine Reserve. Now this is a very 
beautiful, unspoiled looking private island. There is a bay style beach right in the middle where the water is extremely calm. So I do think that this is particularly nice if you have children or even if you just want a nice lazy day floating in that gorgeous water. There's volleyball on the beach set up. There are a couple of beach barbecue style restaurants that are included that you can eat at. And by the way, if you do have a drink package on the cruise ship, the drink package does extend to the bars on the island as well. The value. Now I've had some requests to add how much we paid approximately for a cruise. And I do think that can be helpful, especially in today's day and age, because I do think that that can be a little bit of a competitive factor. So we paid for our cruise approximately $3,200 US for three people in a balcony cabin. Now that included a beverage package. So an alcohol beverage package with specialty coffee and water for three people and it included our basic Wi-Fi. Now this was a cruise on one of MSC's newest cruise ships at the end of March over Easter. So I do think that this was a pretty competitive price for what we got. So what were the demographics on board or who else was sailing with us? Now this was definitely something that was a little bit different from many of the other cruises that we've done on let's just say American cruise lines because MSC is an Italian cruise line or a more international or European cruise line. So from what we had heard from crew, and I cannot confirm this, but we were told there were approximately 60% Americans on board and the rest of the guests were international. Now we met a lot of Europeans, so we definitely heard a lot of different languages in the elevators or even if we were sitting at a bar. We heard Italian, we heard French, we heard Dutch, we heard German. Now I'm Canadian and we also met some other Canadians. I imagine that Canadians were probably lumped in with the American market. We also heard a fair amount of Spanish, but we were cruising out of South Florida. And this is definitely something that we will hear on other cruise ships. So I imagine that many of these people may be local as well. Now, that being said, on the cruise ship, the main announcements that we heard daily were usually in English and Italian. Our captain, also known as Captain Bye Bye, would make daily announcements and he was very funny. And it didn't bother me at all to hear the announcements in two languages. Now, there were a lot of families on board, some North American, some European, and I definitely think that this cruise ship is fabulous for families. We also found a lot of friend groups and families on board, and the ages ranged from people in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, so a very varied age group, but I definitely think that this cruise did skew a little bit younger than some of the other cruises that we've been on. So what is the final verdict? What did we like? What did we not like as much? And would we cruise with MSC again. So some of the things that we really liked were the value for the money. I definitely think that MSC has this. At the same time, the service was really very good. Now, one of the things that I really liked was the amount of varied food that was available. And I found it to be quite a good quality, actually beyond what I expected for the price. Now, something that I think that some people will not like, and even for me, I did wonder about it a little bit is, the lack of casual food options outside of the buffet. Now the buffet was open honestly almost all the time. I think it was open probably till about one o'clock in the morning. I'm not sure though, but somewhere around that range. But outside of the buffet, there really weren't many casual food options. I think really any at all. The only casual food option really that was there outside of the buffet was the gelato that was in a couple of different places on the cruise ship. It was absolutely delicious, but there is an extra charge for that. By the way, if you like soft ice cream, you can find that in the buffet. Now, something else that I really liked, and I probably should have mentioned this when we talked about the food, but is the Sea Day Brunch, which they call Tour de Brunch. It really is such a nice menu. So make sure that you do look out for that on sea days, but it's a little bit of an international menu while still having all of those classics that you'll absolutely love. Now, something that could be a negative for some, but definitely wasn't a negative for us, is the fact that people come from different places on this cruise ship. 
And honestly, it felt more like traveling maybe even than on some cruise ships. So I actually appreciated having conversations with people that were from other countries. I didn't mind hearing other languages. My son in particular met other young people that were from Switzerland, that were from Mexico, that were from Germany, and of course, that were from Canada and from the United States. And in the evening time, they hung out together and I thought that was a really nice thing. I also liked the fact that I actually ate a little bit healthier on this cruise than I do on some other cruises when I'm kind of tempted by the poolside french fries, I admit. That said, MSC is coming out with their brand new cruise ship, World America, and from everything that I've read, they are planning to be putting on some more included casual dining venues. So would I recommend MSC and would I cruise with them again? Yes, I would cruise with MSC again and I definitely would recommend them. Now, if you are somebody who does not like crowds, keep in mind, these are large cruise ships. So definitely, I think that you may want to look into the Yacht Club. That is something that I'll look into for the future. I think that that would be really interesting to try and I've heard some amazing things. But beyond that, I think that MSC provides a really good value cruise vacation on absolutely gorgeous cruise ships. Now, I would love to know your questions, so please let me know any specific questions that you have down in the comments below. And if you've sailed MSC one way or the other, please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.